Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my Cedar Point recreation series. Lots to do today, lots to talk about. First of all, I would like to say thanks for your uh, feedback. I'm working a bit ahead. I have a, a backlog of videos going and this is only the, I think, first or second episode I've recorded since they've started going live on YouTube. So uh, reception's been really good so far. People seem to be enjoying the series, which is great. I've gotten some great comments already, some good suggestions. I've added them to my ever-growing list of things to do. So if there's something you've suggested in the comments and I haven't implemented it yet, don't worry. It is definitely on the list. I'm reading everything. I'm going to be trying out everything you guys suggest if it sounds reasonable. So it will just take some time to get to it with the build system I'm using. You know, different things are going to happen at different times. Anyway, let's get into what we're going to be working on today. Last episode, we worked on some building decorations with Hugo's next to Raptor. I learned just after I finished and uploaded that last episode that the pavilion that I built got torn out last summer. So I read, I haven't been able to officially verify that yet, which does raise an interesting question that I hadn't really thought a whole lot about yet. And that is what exactly are we going to be building in this park? Rides have come and gone, buildings have come and gone over the years. And so far I'm just building the park as it exists on Google maps. And that might not necessarily be the best way, the best representation of Cedar Point. Maybe something I'm going to have to think about a little bit more carefully as we're going through. Although in this episode, we do build recently departed Wicked Twister. Well, it was torn down very recently as of this recording. Not one of my favorite rides, but still sad to see something like that go. But since it's very recently been torn down and there's nothing to replace it yet, I figured I don't want to leave an empty space there. We might as well add it in as it's not an incredibly complicated roller coaster. And it adds a nice little eyepiece to the beach here. I wanted to spend this episode doing a lot more park layout related activities, just plopping down areas where buildings are going to go, where flat rides are going to go. And Wicked Twister was pretty easy to throw in here. I also decided to go ahead and get down the giant wheel, the Ferris wheel that is right next door. The little tiny built-in Ferris wheel I added a while ago was just a placeholder. We gotta add in the real thing. You have to get that scale correct. And for this build, I didn't shoestring it like I was originally planning to do so. I learned that there is an easier way that I found in Dirk Link's Get Good video on making a giant Ferris wheel. I will link that in the description if you'd like to try it for yourself. It took me a surprising number of tries to get mine to work correctly. I'm not sure what happened, but the original couple of builds, like the trains just wouldn't go around and they wouldn't stop and let guests off and run statistics calculations and everything. So that was a little annoying. Eventually got there though. Also made some good use of the vehicle editor plugin to hack my ride vehicle so I could get them to be different colors. Normally when you are using the river rafts, you can't edit the individual cars on a train because the game doesn't think that that's a thing that you can do. So I wound up using a, I believe a hyper coaster train because they're almost the same size as the river rafts. So they lined up pretty well. And I was able to color each individual car on the hyper coaster train and then use the ride vehicle editor to change them all into rafts and still have them be different colors. So. That was pretty neat how that worked out. Very happy that I was able to get that done. I also decided to go ahead and throw in some supports for the Ferris wheel just to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm pretty sure we're not going to be moving it from this position, so I felt it was pretty safe to go ahead and throw in some track architecture for the hub, the supports, and the spokes. We will probably be coming back here later to add more, clean it up a little bit, and obviously add the station and everything. But as of today, it is a functioning Ferris wheel. Guests can ride, so pretty exciting to get another ride up and running, I suppose. So in addition to a lot more backlot building layouts, I wound up actually building three coasters today, which I was not expecting. I didn't expect to build one. I was thinking maybe we get to Wicked Twister, but I actually managed to get down Corkscrew as well. I figured it's right behind the west station of the sky ride so it's not super risky to throw it in here so we can build some path around it at a later time 
I've recreated course crew before, so I already had a build ready to go that I was referencing. Not a super complicated coaster anyway, although the one I built here is on a slightly larger scale to kind of match the rest of the park. The one unfortunate thing about how corkscrews work on RCT is that in real life, most corkscrews are kind of on a diagonal, which you have to make compromises for in the game here. So the path isn't going to go around it the correct way. It's not going to be able to go under the corkscrews like it does in real life, which is really cool. It will go under the corkscrews, but it won't be as impressive, I suppose. The real issue, I think, is Power Tower. Uh, it's nestled nicely into the corkscrew layout, but we're going to have to rearrange things a little bit to get it to fit correctly. Hopefully it won't be too big of a deal. But back in this part of the park where we're starting to see that split in the midway, where you can go left to Millennium Force or right to Magnum, and then those paths meet back at the back of the park. But here near the middle, you have a lot of weird transitions, a lot of weird diagonals. There's the turnaround for Iron Dragon here as well that I'm not sure how we're going to fit in. I'm going to get to that pretty soon, hopefully figure all this stuff out. I'm just hoping that the scale that we've designed everything at as far as layout goes is going to be enough that the diagonals won't be a huge deal, but as always, we'll see as we go. So we're laying out a whole bunch more buildings over on the north coast of the park here. I don't even know what most of these buildings are. I think some of it's a hotel. The hotel breakers, I think, are in this area. I'm not 100% sure. I've never stayed there, so I'm not really sure how this part of the park is laid out. A lot of maintenance buildings, a lot of staff parking, things like that. Nothing too exciting. We'll build these buildings in later. But it's nice to get these down, and it's nice that they align up more or less with the grid. Everything's pretty orthogonal over here, so nothing too crazy as far as layout goes over here. Things have been pretty easy so far with that, but I'm, I'm sure we'll hit some, some snags here later on. Finally, I started working on Val Raven as well, since it's also pretty close to the Blue Streak and Raptor areas. It kind of made sense to throw it in here to help kind of glue together the parts of the park that we've already built and where we're going to have problems coming up, as I mentioned earlier, near Corkscrew and Iron Dragon. I'm not a super huge fan of the build I've done. Again, these are all kind of like first draft builds. I'm probably going to go back and tweak them later on, but we definitely just want to get down like how big they are, where they're going to fit into the park, and then we can worry about specifics later. Definitely a couple issues with Valraven as an RCT coaster, mostly scale. For example, you have the gigantic Immelman after the first drop that even the giant half loop built into the game is not nearly big enough for. So you kind of have to fake it with a large incline and some vertical track. And it just really looks weird. I don't think there's anything we can do about it, unfortunately, aside from just scaling the coaster down. And I don't want to do that because I want it to fit with the rest of the park, right? We're also missing one inversion similar to Gatekeeper. There's a, a twist on a diagonal near the end of the layout. So I just left it out, just turned it into a hill instead. Not super upset about that one. It still looks pretty good as far as the end of the layout goes. So, But again, we're probably going to come back and adjust this as we go. Hopefully we can find a better solution for the first half of the layout, which is the part that I'm at least happy with. But... That being said, pretty happy overall with the progress we've made today. A lot of good stuff done. Lots of things laid down. Nice to have a couple more coasters in there to help lay out in the future. We made really good progress so far. I'm pretty pleased with the, the speed at which we've been able to get the layout. But again, we're definitely still at the beginning of our journey. There's a lot left to do. A lot of the details are what's going to take up a lot of my time. These coaster builds are, you know, this, the skeleton on which we will lay down a lot of stuff later that will take up a lot of future time. So regardless, still pretty happy with uh, how things are going so far. I think that's going to do it for today. We're going to end with a couple ride-ons of the layouts that I have so far. As always, if you've got any questions, suggestions, anything you'd like to talk about, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.